What up? This is Rama Screen, and in the anticipation of PG Psycho Gorman, <laughs> which arrives in theaters on demand and on digital Friday, January 22nd, I'm here talking with one of the stars of this new film, Nita. How are you, Nita? Good, and you? Good, good, good. Oh, man, I can't get over the title. It's just so, so wild. And the movie is also bonkers. Um, I watched it recently, and let me start by asking you, uh, Nita. Are you even allowed to watch a horror movie? Were you fans of horror movies? I'm a very big fan of horror movies. This is probably one of my favorite genres is horror um, and comedy. So the fact that I got to number one, be in a film where there's both of those and watch it, I feel like it was the best of both worlds and it was a very good movie. Nothing a person can do can prepare him or her for such a film watching experience. It was just so gnarly. Um, Tell me, Nita, how did a singer slash dancer such as yourself end up being part of this crazy film? Um, so in 2018, I went to this competition called CMTC. It stands for Canadian Model Talent Search. And uh, basically what it is, you sign up for all these competitions. And at the end of this little weekend, you get, you know, recognized by managers and scouts, agents, and everything that you could ever, you know, wish for to start off in this industry. Mm. Well, as you said, I started off as a singer, dancer, and I was in musical theater since I was five years old. So I went there only going into singing and dancing. After um, going to the seminar, I realized that I wanted to do much more than that. And I put myself in every competition there was in talent. And I ended up winning every single award, first place, and this big trophy, it was the, you know, child actor of the year that only one person got. And I was very, very proud of myself and my parents were too. I definitely did not go there to, you know, win like that. I just went there for the experience and to, you know, maybe get recognized in my singing and dancing. After that, I woke up, I had 25 callbacks. We ended up having to almost rebook our flight because we wasn't we weren't sure if we were going to make it, but we ended up not being able to see everybody. But I did meet a lot of amazing people that I still talk to to this day. Um, I got an amazing amazing agent. His, his name is Ryan. I'm with um, Characters in Toronto, and um, I really love him. He really he really works well with my schedule, get me, gets me really good gigs. And so after a few months of doing, uh, you know, the acting and, you know, kind of getting into the groove, my mom actually found this um, link on Facebook and she had checked out Steven's work and seen that he was pretty popular and pretty big. So we put my name down and after, you know, a few weeks of me submitting my self tape, uh, we got a callback from Steven. After that, we had another callback and we had a kind of Zoom session with him, uh, Steve. And um, then the third time they called us back, they wanted to meet me and my mother in person. So we flew out to Toronto and we, uh, you know, I did the live audition and then we flew back home and a few weeks after that, we got an email asking if I still was interested in playing the role of, role of Mimi. And of course, you know, I was, I was so stoked and excited. And uh, I got the, I got the script and I was used to doing 25 to maybe 50 pages in musical theater. Mm. And this script was a hundred pages and I was in almost 85 of them. <laughs> so I definitely got to work quick, started mesmerizing everything. And um, I think I memorized the whole script in like a month or something, but I definitely, I knew my lines. I knew his lines and her lines. I, I knew everybody's lines and cues. I was like so excited to go because this was my very first time being in front of the camera and not in front of a live audience. So it was uh, definitely something different. Well, yeah, that's understandable because next to Psycho Gorman, uh, you are basically also the film's lead star. That's why you show up so, in so many scenes. And this movie is very gory, bloods and guts everywhere. I'm curious, did you have a strong stomach through all of that? Or were there times when you kind of felt a bit squeamish at uh, some of the practical effects? 
so they did realize that this was a very gory film and so i'd say um 95 of the time that you see these gory things happening i wasn't there um they made sure uh to um to do it when on days that i was off because you know you don't always want to see that you know sometimes <laughs> the breakfast starts to come up and you know you feel those eggs and you're like okay i'm gonna walk away now but there was times definitely that i turned a corner and i seen a monster suit and i kind of jumped there because it was kind of <laughs> creepy especially in um uh, the warehouse we had filmed in for um the majority of this the film actually and uh, yeah that was definitely a scary warehouse um it wasn't just on on you know on screen it was it was it was haunted i'm pretty sure <laughs> it was very spooky yes. uh let's talk about your character mimi because mimi seemed like a regular kid at first quarreling with her brother which is normal in any family but then she got this gem and she got the, to control this killing machine creature i mean does Mimi treat PG uh, more like a pet or more like a toy? And what do you think is the reason behind Mimi's power trip? Um, I think the reason behind her power trip is because all her life, she's always thought that she was the boss. And all of a sudden, she is. She is really the boss. And nobody can tell her what to do because she has this gem and this big old monster that can do whatever she wants, whenever she wants. And um, so I think people really start to be like, oh, shoot, like this is not good. But um, Mimi was a very um, energetic person. And I think that probably the last person whilst watching that film that should have had the gem was Mimi. But I always, I also think that it's the best character that got to get the gem because she definitely did the most interesting things with PG. Yeah, and, and it seems that the, the evolution of the dynamic between PG and Mimi uh, eventually becomes more like uh, Mimi cares a bit about PG, right? Yeah, so it's a definitely uh, an interesting story. So at first, you know, uh, PG is a big guy. He's a big monster. He, he doesn't like being told what to do. And so now that he's practically forced into doing whatever this little eight-year-old girl is telling him to do first of all that takes away from pg's power and feeds it all the way into mimi so mimi's extra confident now but um after a while she realizes i think that pg is not more of a toy but he you know he has a heart too and um i really think that pg and mimi has have one of the strongest connections throughout the whole film and what was that like working with uh, Matthew uh, on, on that project? Um, it was great. He's a very sweet, nice guy. He always knew, you know, like how to boost our spirits and our energy. He has kids of his own. So working with me and Owen at 3 a.m. when we were crazy, it, he, he really knew like how to contain ourselves. And, you know, me being this little, you know, I'm almost 14 now, but being that little 12 year old girl, I was always energetic and, and hyper and jumping around. And then all of a sudden I'd be taking a nap on my mom's shoulder and then I'm back up. But um, yeah, he definitely um, tried his very, very best. Uh, that poor guy, he was in that suit almost all day long and you can't really eat, can't really go to the bathroom. <laughs> can't hardly breathe it's so hot in that suit but he's definitely a team you know team sport and um he definitely deserves a pat on the back for that <laughs> agreed uh did you get to take home uh the gem with you after production wrap did you take any souvenirs from the set so i had asked steve to let me take the gem back and I was like, please let me bring it back. I need this gem. But they had had to do some extra, I guess, some extra filming with the gem mm. because they hadn't got like everything with it. Uh, but I had asked him to make me my own, but that didn't happen yet. I'll <laughs> definitely have to shoot him an email. But I did take um, one of the scenes PG goes shopping for normal people clothes. And I remember me and Owen, uh, we had took in one of those shirts and we ripped it in half and I have one half of the shirt. I don't have it here, I don't think, but um, I have one half the shirt. He has the other. I also took some um, little cool, fun things that I found in my room. Um, so I have like two Barbie dolls that are like decapitated and have blood all over them. They kind of got meme-fied. Um, and then I also, I think I have a Barbie car that I had taken back and squished in my suitcase. 
but um yeah I definitely would have took more that set was like crazy but honestly I was going flying home from Toronto to Nova Scotia I didn't want a bunch of these little toy figurines in my bag but um (laughs) yeah no that set was really cool the art department went crazy on that they had a blast and um yeah yeah definitely and the costumes were amazing for those creatures as well now um I guess my final question is what's next on your horizon and are you gunning for projects that are more musical um I I don't I really like acting but I'd love to do you know I'd love to be on Broadway one day um now is probably not the best time you know everything is pretty much shut down especially in New York in the big cities that I would like to work in and that I've worked in before but um Broadway being signed with big record labels and um even like um pursuing uh, my career in dancing is definitely something that I'd like to look in in the future but for right now acting is definitely more than enough I'm a very busy person right now and um but yeah I really love acting and I I really want to stick with it for the rest of my life all right for my fans at home everybody go check out PG Psycho Gorman arriving in theaters on demand and on digital Friday January 22nd Nita thank you so much for talking to me and congratulations thank you (laughs) 